Hello and welcome back to Camp Tecumseh for the final nine holes here at the 2023 Bazaar Tecumseh, run by DS Upshot Tournaments and Shops and sponsored by Reaper Disc Supply. We're in Pittstown, New Jersey for the final nine holes, and I'm Dave Oster here with Mike Grofsick. Mike, how's it going? Hi right, again, Dave. It's going well. Uh, we saw a very interesting front nine with some scores moving around a bit, some birdies, some bogeys. Uh, and as you see, a lot of pars there from Robert, but that has definitely kept him in the running. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see on this back nine if anybody can close that four stroke gap that Elias has created. Uh, we go with hole 10, which is an island hole. You have to get over uh, that second road that you see there that, yeah, this one that we can only see now. Uh, everything on the grass side of that, the far side, is in play. Uh, if you do not make the island, you will head to a drop zone. Just a bit over 300 feet, and we see Elias work his way up there pretty nicely. Uh, I think he'll have a bit of an angle to get around those trees uh, by the basket, uh, but he might be behind them. We'll have to see where that ended up. As Robert also goes with a straighter shot that's going to hyzer out late uh, and pretty much end up in the same spot as Elias was. Yeah, tricky little hole. Low ceiling if you go straight at it. Obviously longer than 317 if you take the hyzer where there's more air space. Similar to that, David gets caught up and that will be out of bounds. Didn't get all the way across the road going to drop zone. Very close to that, a couple feet to the left, but that will be a penalty stroke. And it was a little hard to see, but I do believe he clipped a branch there. I don't think it just hyzered out early. I do, I do think he hit that one tree that's in the way, and that made him stay OB as opposed to getting across. And then Rick makes his way up there very nicely as well. He'll have a very short putt for birdie. And it does look from this angle like those first two shots are a bit obstructed as we see an excellent par save from David there. Uh, from the uh, spot where he went out, actually. So I apologize. They did not use the drop zone, uh, the traditional drop zone for this tournament, which worked out quite nicely for David as he was able to save his par with about a 70 or 80 foot putt from there, I would say. Yeah, great putt for David. I wonder if the drop zone is if you don't reach that second road. Because sometimes they'll play that inside grass is inbounds. So if you don't make it all the way to the road, then it's the drop zone. Um, a lot of different ways you can play it, and it's usually up to the TD's discretion. Um, but great putt for David, David either way. And then Robert follows with also a very nice putt as he had to straddle pretty wide uh, and get down pretty low to get the angle that he wanted. As we see Elias having a more traditional stance there, and he's able to cash in on the birdie as well. Uh, it's funny on this course how much difference, you know, they were two feet apart and they had entirely different putts from 15 feet away. Yeah, it's pretty close guardian trees, but uh, everybody made it in two strokes. Just one out-of-bound stroke for David as we move over to hole 11, 503-foot par 4. The road plays as a river, so you can land short of it, usually on the right side as additional play, and then have a straight to fading right-to-left shot, usually a backhand hyzer, trying to get into... The green, which is on an extremely sloped hill. Um, and that's about as close as you can get it to that road. Uh, Elias setting himself up for a great second shot. Pretty easy, probably within 200 feet. It was interesting to see him push it that far because you really don't need to get a ton of distance on this tee shot. As you said, from where he is, it's probably only about 180 to 200 feet to the basket. So that's the more traditional shot there from Robert where you're going to land a little bit short of that grill that you see right in the middle there. Uh, and it still leaves you a very easy hyzer approach. Yeah, this is a good hole design. I like it because the road l winds up being right kind of where you would like to land a first shot of a par 4. And it's just a bit too far because you're kind of throwing down the road to try to get all the way past it and onto the left side on your first shot. So it makes you dial it back more than you're more comfortable with. Yeah, I think they really nailed the distances uh, on this hole. I think they got it exactly right. And as you said, it, it leads to having to make a decision of how hard to push it. 
uh, and how easy you want your second shot to be. Great shot by David, getting pretty much as close to the hill as you can get without the disc potentially rolling back down. And then from there, the bottom of the basket is probably above his head. It's very elevated. If you do get up on the hill, you may be a bit closer, but you're going to have a very awkward stance. And Rob coming up short as well, going to have almost an impossible look at it going along the tree line to a, the basket on the hill. Yeah, that's not the side you want to be on. Uh, you'd rather be deep on this hole and putt back at the basket as it's a little bit more open. If you're short uh, where Rob was, it is a very, very guarded basket from that angle. Um, so I think he's going to be a little upset with himself uh, on a pretty short approach, not just pushing it out a little bit further on the hyzer. A couple of pretty good approaches by Rick and Elias should have not easy, but short-ish Birdie putts. Yep, and as you can see there, uh, Robert looked like he wasn't even running it. He was just trying to lay it up, and he still hit a tree um, because Ooh. it is, like I said, very guarded. One tree, David's trying to get around, catches it. Luckily, does sit up on the hill, so although it'll be hard to literally walk up there, it should have a pretty easy just tap in once it gets up there. And that was actually pretty lucky uh, for David oh. as Robert just spits out a tiny bit. It wasn't a true spit out. He was off a little bit right side, but just couldn't creep over. But just the fact that, uh, going back to David's, that it did actually stay on the hill once it hit the tree was pretty fortunate for him because, as you said, the video doesn't really do justice to how sloped that is. And it's very rare that discs actually stay there. Good putt there for Elias, extending his lead for the moment. Rick has a opportunity to stay on pace. Currently, solo second place and able to cash it in. And you saw he really took his time with that one, even though he was only 15 or so feet away, because you do not want to miss on this slope. You could end up with a further putt on the on the comebacker than you did on the original one yeah and you can see these guys literally having struggles just standing at their lie that's how steep that hill is well 12 uh, is 181 foot par three uh, you're gonna go up this little alleyway towards the bridge that you see and then hyzer out to the left and you see elias go with a pretty spiky hyzer that's going to come up just a little bit shorter than he would have liked, uh, probably right about edge of circle one. And this is an, another interesting hole. Camp Tecumseh really does have some fun holes at it. It's about as far left as it is far straight once you get to that corner. So that super high spike hyzer to get the disc moving far left is really what you have to do to get all the way over there. Um, and you can't go much f past the basket because of the severe slope up to the lakeside yeah it's really about how much you want to push the shot because like you said you really do want to get it high uh, as we see robert unfortunately be a little too inside and get knocked down pretty early there uh, although as we said it's not the longest hole so he should definitely have the approach to save that par uh, but you don't want to push it too high uh, because if it hyzers back you're going to end up in that little stream there have a stroke to your score. Good height is, there for Rick, Rick well. just a little bit to the right. Some more distance here for Elias to pull away a little bit. And he leaves that just a little short, probably an inch or so low. Good putt there for Rob. Opposite of the last hole, his feet were above the band as opposed to his head's below the basket. And that's another, as we've talked about a couple times for different things, that's another staple of Tecumseh is a lot of your putts are going to be with some type of slope, whether it's uphill or downhill. Not a whole lot flat going on on this course. 
Yeah, great challenge. I think commonly Camp Tecumseh comes in as one of the top three courses in New Jersey. And we're seeing here why. Hole 13, 282 feet. Really two ways to go. We're looking at the left side, backhand turnover or forehand, kind of matching the slope of the hillside. Or some players will go down this more narrow right side, really depending on the wind. Um, unique shot because it's almost like you're throwing a hyzer, but it's matching the sh the slope of the hill the entire way, basically until it lands. Whereas usually you're trying to find a spot for it to kind of flatten out and hit, but you need it to kind of stay in that spot. Hyzer angle, um, backhand turnover does flatten out there for Rick, and that's a great shot. Yeah, the backhand hand turnover is a good option on this hole, but you do have to be careful with it. You have to make sure you do get it turned over because what you can't see up that hill on the left uh, is a body of water uh, that is definitely OB. Uh, so you want to make sure if you're throwing backhand that you get it turned over. Okay, looks like nobody's opting for that right side. This needs to keep turning, doesn't quite, could get the roll, almost does. Sometimes you hit the middle of the hill, it will roll all the way to the basket. Uh, Rob's going to have a long, another high to low putt. Doesn't quite give it enough. And compared to the hill that Rob was just on, it seems like nothing, but this basket is on another slope again. So roll away would be a possibility, but not if you land it in the bottom of the basket. Another good putt for Elias. Yeah, he's going to be really happy with that one. Uh, having the, the pressure of being in the lead coming down the stretch did not seem to affect him there at all, as that was pretty much the perfect putt. Ooh, David as well. Then Rick is going to clean up his easy birdie. And Robert is going to do a bit of a fancy drop in there for his par. As we move on to hole 14, which is a 531 foot par four. Uh, you would say this is probably one of the softer holes on the course. You just throw a nice long shot down the hill here. And you should have an approach for these guys of definitely under 200 feet, probably under 150 feet. Um, so if I had to guess, I'd say this is possibly the most scorable hole on the course, uh, but if not, definitely top three. Yeah, I would say the only danger would come in, especially for these top guys in MPO, is if you try to do too much, if some people think that they could reach 530 feet downhill, you start to bring in the woods, you start to bring in that OB road on the left, and it really tightens up. Um, so another hole dialing, we're dialing it back. Um, is the better play because if you're just trying for the birdie you can easily set yourself up with an under 200 foot approach yeah and we saw rick there have that hyzer out definitely earlier than he wanted uh, a good by good ways and it still wasn't really in danger of going into the road um, so that kind of lends itself although like you said it is definitely possible to reach if you're going too big but you have a lot of wiggle room uh, on your tee shot to to try to push it uh, as we see, Robert looks like that's going to keep turning and not get that hyzer back, and he's going to be in the pretty thick stuff in there. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think there is eventually out of bounds in there. Not that Rob found it, but that creek from 12 winds back up and gets kind of close near the basket, but can be found back where Rob went into the woods. Yeah, it's more of a danger on your second shot, I would say, as opposed to the tee shot. You'd really have to cut through a lot of the woods line on the tee shot, whereas, like you see on the second shot there, that's pretty close, um, but you can find it a little bit more easily on that second shot. And that's a really nice recovery from Robert, as he had to go pretty much straight sideways on his second shot out of the woods, uh, but he's able to recover for the tap-in par. As Oh, David, David almost, almost hitting the chains 
for the eagle. Wind up a little bit into the woods, but should have a short enough putt. And that definitely would have made it a little bit more interesting on the last few holes if he was able to close the gap with an eagle. But he is able to get the birdie on the short comebacker. As Rick is going to once again go to a knee here and try to get a little bit more into that opening. There is some thick underbrush in there and it looks like a branch that's kind of annoying him a bit. But branch or no branch, he is able to walk away with his birdie. And that keeps it close. Only two strokes from the lead with uh, three to go. Four, four to go. Three strokes, of course, now. But three, three strokes with four to go, definitely doable. We've got the par five on hole 18. Anything can happen. Yeah, if you haven't played this course before, hole 18 can definitely change some scores very quickly. Oh, yeah. But before we get there, we're on hole 15, on the opposite side of the road of hole 18, as a matter of fact. Um, out of bounds, road and across. One tree really in your way. The out of bounds does wrap around the basket behind, so this wide backhand works well. And using the road to skip back in is a common play, and you can see why. Yeah, it's an interesting stretch of the course because it is a tough course. Like I said, you have to hit your lines very challenging overall. Um, but this is kind of the easy stretch as I would say that these two are, you know, 14 and 15 are the easiest holes on the course as we see these guys putting them very close so far. Forehand is the other play, but you're going towards the out of bounds. Fortunate for David to have enough spike angle to stick. Um... More open, not going over the out-of-bounds, but maybe a little more dangerous because direction your disc is ending. And Rob coming up maybe 30 feet. He'll have the longest putt of the group. 25. Yeah, I think David did get a little bit lucky there. Um, it was a little bit more inside than I think he wanted on that forehand hyzer because you really don't want to flirt with the road on such an easy hole. Um, and like you said, the angle was just enough that he got a little bit of that counter skip uh, to stay out of the OB. A little left sticks in there. Keeping the now a turkey that going for Rick. It is very good play by Rick in these last few holes to keep it close and keep the pressure on Elias. Uh, because it's not overly difficult to par the last few holes if you're intentionally playing for par. Uh, but I don't think Elias can really afford to do that just yet. Uh, as Rick is putting the pressure on him. As we see hole 16, 336 feet, par 3. Uh, you are pretty much throwing straight at it uh, off of the road tee pad that you see here. Not much in the way. This is just kind of control your shot. Make sure you get it on the angle you want. And Elias does that very well to get to about 20 or so feet. The only challenge I would say for this hole is if you go pure hyzer, those trees can come into play. Maybe similar to this if it doesn't hyzer back in time. Actually, maybe it helped Rick. Hit the branches and fell straight down next to the basket. Rick is definitely putting the pressure on Elias here, uh, keeping it just close enough to force Elias to hit his shots. As David once again goes forehand off the tee, mixing it up a little bit. Just a couple feet over to basket, a little ace run action. And didn't want to... I forgot to mention, David also got a turkey after the last hole, so... That battle for second is about as close as battle for the lead. And that's unfortunately been the story of Robert's day today. Just the, the littlest bit off. He's throwing good shots, but it's he's not quite giving himself the birdie looks he wants. And again there, we can see just a little bit off on the putt uh, due to that distance. He's throwing well, just probably not as well as he wants for the putts that he would like. 
little little nub action there for David. Top of the disc. Front of the disc made it over the top of the rim, but the back kind of got caught up. Um, and there's another one, a turkey uh, for Elias. Got himself one. And that's a really big putt from Elias because Rick was parked. Uh, you knew he was tapping in for birdie. So if Elias doesn't hit that putt, it goes to two up with two left. Uh, now being three up with two left, he's got a little bit more wiggle room. Yep, keeping a three is important. Here we have hole 17, 441 foot. Probably the easiest, the longest par three on the course, but it is severely downhill. Playing as an island, there is an OB line. Maybe a hundred feet or so short straight. Um, and then the out of bounds road wrapping around as we see Elias throwing a pretty great shot. He'll have maybe a little bit of a branch in his way, but other than that, you can't really ask to be much closer than that, 440 feet away. Uh, drop zone if you don't land in bounds. Yeah, and the drop zone is a tough look at a par save, and that's part of why that putt on the last hole was so important because if Elias does go OB and Rick is able to put it close, you're going to have a very easy two-stroke swing uh, heading into the last hole. Yeah, we see Rick made it inbounds, but the left side of the green is even further than 100 feet. You can probably get to up to 120 or so feet as you go left, so he's going to have a long look to try to save pace, and that was an out-of-bounds throw for David, so he'll be heading to the drop zone. Yeah, David, just not taking the downslope quite enough into mind there, uh, turning over the forehand just a bit too much as it rode down that slope and just couldn't hyzer back in bounds in time. As Robert puts his right on the line, it looks like. And I think this is actually playing as a hazard today. David playing from his lie, but with that penalty stroke. And... Rob's mini is across the line, so I guess he was inbounds. And now a long look for Rick to stay pace with Elias. And, oh, just barely missing the cage. That was a good confident run from Rick. Would have been nice to see him sink that to add a little bit of tension heading into the last hole, but... Elias is going to clean up his birdie for four straight, and he has really earned this victory today. It's not over yet, but he's going to have a five-stroke lead heading into the last hole, so you got to feel pretty confident about that. And he has definitely earned it on the back stretch here. Absolutely. Slow start to the second round. Definitely turned it around, as you can see. I think he was even through six or seven holes. Um, so since then, an eight-down round pretty well. Rick has definitely been keeping pace. Um, hole 18, like we said, is par 5. I think usually playing the hardest on the course. This road we're looking at behind is out of bounds all the way around. Um, thick rough on the left and an OB creek to contend with. So, um, tell us, tell us more about 18. it. <laughs> yeah, here is 18. It's a 902 foot par 5. Uh, you have a pretty decent sized fairway um, to aim Good for. Round, uh, these guys really shouldn't be flirting with OB at all, but there are some branches that kind of overhang and can cut off your shots a little bit. Uh, the trick is the approach to the basket. That is where the stream comes into play as Elias starts with a very nice drive down the fairway here. And Rick is going to try to start himself off well for second place here. Uh, David a few strokes back, but as we said, scores can change very quickly on this hole. Uh, as, like you said, it does play the hardest on the course typically. Ooh, this looks overturned. Needs some stability, some ground play. Doesn't look like it's gonna come back, so that's another Another OB stroke there for David. And that went out very early. He really tried to bite off a lot there. So that could actually open up the door for Robert to sneak into a potentially third place finish. Except it looks like he might unfortunately be... No, he's going to catch the road. 
Nicely done there. And if you can do that, Rude Skip is going to give you quite a bit more distance. So Rob might have got all the way down to the flat on the bottom. And decent shot for David going to the forehand. And you can kind of see that stump if you have played Tecumseh before but haven't for a while. There was one really big, really old tree, um, pretty much dead. That was your last big obstacle on your second or probably your third shot. Um, it has since been taken down for safety reasons. Uh, making the last approach shot of this hole that much easier. Um, but still, still playing I think as the hardest hole in the course. Yeah, it's definitely a tough one because it does kind of bottleneck up there towards the basket and forces you to either lay up uh, as those guys uh, just showed us or it seems like Elias might actually be pushing this one over uh, but he's going to find OB which is an interesting mistake with the lead he has I definitely would have thought he would have laid up to try to just get the easy par almost... from where he was potentially even the easy birdie yeah I almost wonder if that was a intentional out of bounds, similar to what we saw Simon Lazat uh, last year at Toboggan. Just throw it straight, throw it far, and with the lead that he has, take the penalty stroke, but just give yourself an easy next shot. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. I mean, if he tries to lay up and, and has it hyzer out on him into the woods, it's very thick in there, and that could definitely po pose more issues than, a, than an out of bounds stroke would. So it could be. Yeah, I only say that because it was way out of bounds. Not even just like a little bit. All the way across the bridge. Um, and yeah, see? Maybe thinking that he would have this shot. It could have been intentional. Could have been a very smart play given the strokes that he had to play with. Yeah, looks like it's Yeah, and speaking off. of the scores, you can actually see, uh, based on the scores from this round, how different the two rounds played. Elias had the hot round of... Six down in the first round. Uh, next best was only one under, and everybody is going to beat that in this round with David finishing up his at five under. Uh, so definitely a, a very different scoring day between the two rounds. Yeah, and it's very similar layout. A couple of different holes. They had the ooh, it's Rick misses that last one. Doesn't not going to affect his place, but a nice. 10 down would have been nice on the round. A couple of different holes that they played on the first round. But Elias the having shot. the hot round both rounds Don't worry about the putt. here Those with a birdie. The Just tap it out and finish out this tournament. And he will end up with a par on that one due to that one OB stroke. Uh, only four shots, but the extra OB stroke in there. We'll finish his day at 14 under overall. And Rob finishing with a birdie, getting a three. So 14 down for Elias White. Congratulations. You are 2023 Bizarre Tecumseh winner. Great play by all four of these guys. Just got to see the entire MPO field, which was nice. Um, Kip Tecumseh, great course. What are your final thoughts? Yeah, it, no, it was a great round of disc golf. Uh, they kept it close enough to be very interesting heading into the last few holes uh, when Elias was able to pull away, but definitely a great tournament. Absolutely. Thanks to our supporting sponsors. And, of course, thanks to you for watching this. Um, we have plenty more tournaments coming out. We've got a lot of A-tiers. Um, this was the last tournament we filmed last year, given to you guys as a sneak peek at the beginning of the season this year. Um, so subscribe, like this video, and there'll be plenty more to come. And we will see you over there.